So, welcome to the second lecture of this module. We have been discussing the macromechanical analysis of laminate and in the last class so we have discussed uh, what is a laminate and what is the requirement of laminate in the form of uh, stacking large number of lamina uh, perfectly bonded so as to uh, provide the uh, required strength and stiffness of a particular component. And uh, the objective here is to understand the uh, response of a laminate subjected to force and uh, shear it could be an axial force, it could be shear force, it could be bending okay. and also the environment could be hydrothermal uh, environment that may subjected to combined hydrothermal mechanical loading, how a laminate actually responds to load. So, one of the simplest uh, theory uh, put forward was actually the classical lamination theory and today we will discuss in details the classical lamination theory. Okay. So, classical lamination theory is based on some assumptions. Uh, number one that each layer is homogeneous and orthotropic. By this time we understand what is the an uh, homogeneous and orthotropic. Actually each la lamina is heterogeneous, but in macromechanical analysis uh, we have considered the lamina to be homogeneous which is which was represented by its average properties even though the average properties are actually functions of the constituent fiber and the matrix. Okay. So, that way uh, here also in the uh, classical lamination theory we will assume each lamina to be homogeneous and represented by its average properties namely E 1, E 2, nu 1, 2 and G 1, 2 and each layer is orthotropic there is that means there is no in plane shear extension coupling in the material direction. Okay. And the laminate is thin and its dimension is much uh, larger, lateral dimensions are much larger compared to its uh, uh, thickness and the uh, laminate is loaded only in the in plane that is uh, each lamina is experiencing uh, only in plane stresses sigma x, sigma y and tau x y. Referring to this figure if you consider this lamina, laminate okay, then the outer plane stresses sigma z tau x z and tau y z is 0 this is true for thin laminate. Okay. Then all the displacements are small meaning that we can actually use the linear strain displacement relationship okay. that means we are eliminating the uh, non-linearity which might occur because of the large displacement. Okay. And then the displacements are continuous throughout the laminate uh, in plane displacements vary linearly along the thickness of the laminate. Uh, that means they are linear functions of z. In plane displacement means suppose uh, with respect to this figure, suppose u is the uh, x component of displacement, v is the y component of displacement, and say w is the z component of displacement. So, in plane displacement means u and v are actually linear functions of z. That means u, v are. linear functions of z. Okay. Z is the thickness direction. Then transverse shear strain gamma x z and gamma y z are negligible. Uh, this assumption 6 along with assumption 5 implies that uh, a line perpendicular to the mid, six, mid surface of the laminate which is straight before deformation remains straight and perpendicular even after deformation. Okay. That means, it is a kind of we know that plane section remains plane. So, if what, what exactly this means is suppose we consider this laminate, suppose we take a section in the x z plane, okay. we take a section in the x z plane, okay. this is the laminate, layered laminate of course, we are uh, not showing the layer here. So, this is in the x z plane. Okay. Suppose we consider a in that section a rectangle, small rectangle A, B, C, D, okay, and this is the mid surface of the uh, laminate. Therefore, the line AD is straight and perpendicular to the mid surface before deformation. Suppose after deformation. this is the deformed shape. So, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. Even after deformation this 
sorry this is C and this is D. Even after deformation this line A D remains straight and perpendicular to the middle surface. That means, this is a pure rotation there is no shear strain. Suppose uh, there is shear strain in the xz plane then this rectangle ABCD would not have remained as rectangle what it would have perhaps it would have taken a shape like this. That means, the point A would have moved to A dash B would have moved to B dash and you know this angle is the measure of shear strain gamma xz deviation from the right angle. Okay. So, because this xz is 0 therefore, the transverse strain is negligibly small or 0 therefore, the line AD which was straight and perpendicular to the mid surface still remains straight and perpendicular to the mid surface. So, this is what it is that means, similarly you can take a, a section in the yz plane and show that gamma yz 0 means a, a, a line which is initially straight and perpendicular to the middle surface will be so after deformation. Okay. And then, then the strain displacement and stress strain relations are linear already we have considered small displacement therefore, the linear strain displacement relationship will be used and uh, stress strain relationships are linear that means, it obeys Hooke's law. Okay. Epsilon z that means, strain in the z direction is uh, negligibly small I mean compared to epsilon x and epsilon y and we may consider this to be 0. This means, uh, if this is the thickness of the laminate say h because it is thin therefore, when it is deformed change in length of this line a d is negligibly small compared to the displacement. Therefore, we can consider that epsilon z or the strain in the z direction is negligibly small. Okay. Now, with these assumptions basically what kind of assumptions we made? We made assumptions on we made assumptions on the nature of displacement. Okay. We have assumed that U v that means, in plane displacements are actually linear function of z. We have also assumed the st strain displacement relations are linear. We have also assumed the stress strain behavior as linear. So, we have assumed displacement, we have assumed stress strain. Then we will see how we actually establish the relationship between force and deflection or say stresses and strains using equilibrium equation okay, using equilibrium and then finally, we will see how the overall the laminate could be characterized that means, the laminate constitutive relationship. Okay. So, this is what we will be doing uh, in the classical lamination theory. So, first we will see the displacements we, we represent the laminate say this is a laminate a uh, multi layered uh, uh, laminate. So, we fix the coordinate system at the mid surface of the laminate. Okay. So, mid surface of the laminate uh, and say u naught say u naught v naught and W naught are the x, y and z component of of displacement of the mid surface. Okay. That means, if we represent this is the middle surface, what is the middle surface? Middle surface is nothing but the reference plane mid surface is which is equidistant from the top and bottom surface of the laminate. So, this is the mid surface. Okay. This is x, this is y and this is z. We fix our origin here okay, at the mid surface. Therefore, x component of displacement is u naught, 
y component of displacement is v naught, z component of displacement of the mid surface is w naught. Okay. So, we can write that uh, u naught u naught is equal to is a function of x and y it, it does not depend upon z. Similarly, v naught is a function of x and y it of because it is the mid surface displacement it also does not depend upon z w naught is w naught x y. Okay. So, this is the mid surface displacement u naught v naught w naught along x y and z and these are functions of x and y only. Okay. Now, if we consider a x z section we take a section of this laminate in the x z plane just see and we take a section in the x z plane. Okay. So, this is how it looks like in the x z plane we just take a small of the laminate and we consider a straight line a d okay, which is in the x z plane. Okay. A straight line uh, a d which is in the x z plane a is the bottom point d is the top point I mean point on the top surface c is the point where this line meets the reference plane and b is any point which is at a distance of say z b. b is any point on this line which is at a distance of z b from the mid surface. Okay. Now, after deformation this is the initial and this is deformed. So, after deformation the point A moves to A dash, B moves to B dash, C moves to C dash and D moves to D dash. But then uh, going by our assumptions that the line A D still remains straight and it remains perpendicular to the mid surface at, as you could see from this figure. This is because there is no transverse shear strain that means tau a, a gamma x z is equal to 0. Okay. So, in the x z plane u naught is the x displacement x component of displacement of point of the middle sub, uh, of the reference plane okay as you can see similarly a moves to a dash therefore the length between uh, the dist, uh, the if i join a and a dash in the x direction this u a is the displacement of point a x component of displacement similarly u b is the uh, x component of displacement of point b now, since it's undergo, it, it rotates, it, it, uh, it undergoes pure rotation, you can see there is no shear strain. Therefore, uh, this distance, okay, because this distance is z b, therefore, this distance is for small angle z b into alpha x, this is z b into alpha x. Therefore, we can write uh, the rotation of x axis rotation of x axis alpha x is nothing but as you can see in the figure is nothing but d w naught d x okay. and rotation of y axis alpha y is equal to so this is the equation number 1 this is the equation number 2 how we get this alpha y analogous to taking a section in the xz plane we can also take a section along yz plane and then measure uh, this distance between a and a dash as v v a distance between b and b dash as v b and distance between uh, c and c dash as v naught okay and the rotation will be alpha y okay uh, then if we look at this geometry from the geometry we can see that ub ub distance of point b x component of the displacement of point b is equal to u naught 
minus z b into del w naught del x. Okay. Similarly, for y component v b is equal to v naught minus z b del w naught del y. Okay. It is actually this is uh, u naught minus z b into alpha x because this distance is z b into alpha x. Alpha x is nothing but del w naught del x. Similarly, this is v naught minus z b into alpha y. So, this is equation number 3. Therefore, now we could correlate the displacement of any point b which is at a distance of z b from the mid surface in terms of the mid surface displacement and the rotation. Okay. So, for any general point for any point any point at a distance of z from the reference plane or mid surface. Okay. This is the reference plane. Okay. We can write that u is equal to u naught minus z del w naught del x and v is equal to v naught minus z del w naught del y. Okay. Therefore, we can now write that u that means, the x component of displacement of any point as a function of now x y z is equal to u naught minus z del w naught del x v x y z is equal to v naught minus z del w naught del y and w x y z is equal to w naught x y. That means, the say this is equation number 4. Outer plane displacement that means, the displacement along z okay, that means, is for the uh, whole laminate is at any point on the laminate is same as that of the mid surface displacement. Okay. This is because it is thin and therefore, the displacement of the whole laminate could actually be represented by the displacement of the mid surface. Okay. And the in plane displacement u and v could be expressed in terms of the in plane displacement of the mid surface and the jet uh, uh, the, dis, uh, the distance of that point from the reference plane in the z direction. Okay. Basically, u is equal to u naught minus z into del w del x del w naught del x and similarly, v is equal to v naught minus z into del w naught del x. So, we could actually express the displacements of any point uh, in the laminate okay, as a function of x y z. Of course, outer plane displacement w does not depend upon z. You can see that if we put if we put z is equal to 0 in 4 we get the mid surface displacement or reference plane displacement. Okay. And if we put z is equal to say plus h by 2 or minus h by 2, we get 
the displacements of the bottom and top surface of the because the thickness of the laminate is h h is the thickness of the laminate okay so we obtained the expressions for displacement and it is as per the assumptions made that means the in plane displacements are linear uh, in plane displacement actually vary linearly with z and it is quite clear here from this expression 4 you can clearly see that they vary linearly with z okay at z is equal to 0 it is a mid surface displacement and as we increase z it increases linearly okay so having established the displacement field that means we, we could now express the displacements u v and w of the laminate in terms of the mid mid, the mid surface displacement and the dis, and the z coordinate of the point along the th thickness of the laminate so having uh, uh, obtain the displacement field. Now, let us see the strain displacement relationship. So, with our, again with our assumption that for small displacement, we have the expressions for strain displacement as this uh, epsilon x equal to del u del x, epsilon y is equal to del v del y and gamma x y, these are the in plane strains okay? epsilon x, epsilon y and gamma x y. Therefore, using the expressions for displacement from 4, we could write that epsilon x if we put the expression for u that is del u naught del x minus z del square w naught del x square. Okay. Similarly, we could write epsilon y is equal to del v naught del y minus z del square w naught del y square. Okay. So, similarly we can also write that gamma x y is equal to del u naught del y plus del v naught del x minus twice z del square w naught del x del y. So, we could establish the expressions for strains in terms of uh, mid surface displacement and uh, the derivative of the uh, derivative of the rotation okay? uh, like first derivative of del, del w naught del x, del w naught del x is nothing but alpha x okay? and this is again these uh, expressions for strains are as per our assumptions that uh, the in plane displacements vary linearly with z okay, and there is no transverse shear strain. So, that you can check here also suppose we want we would like to find out what is gamma x z transverse shear strain. So, this is nothing but del u del z plus del w del x. And if you see the expressions for u in equation number 4, so this u in this expression for u, u naught is actually only function of x and y therefore, derivative with respect to z vanishes and here this term is a linear function of z therefore, we can just this term will be retained. Similarly, for v, so we can write del u del z is equal to minus del omega naught del x and plus del omega del x sorry del w naught del x and del w del x is nothing but del w naught del x therefore, this is equal to 0. Similarly, gamma y z is equal to del v del z plus del w del y again if you look back the expressions for v, v naught is uh, only function of x and y therefore, its derivative with respect to z vanishes therefore, only the next term remains which is a linear function of z therefore, this is minus d w naught d y 
and this is del w naught del y is equal to 0. So, we could see that based on the assumptions that the transverse strains uh, shear strains are 0, we have established the expressions for displacement field which again satisfies this. Okay. So, this could be written as we can write this as epsilon x is equal to epsilon x naught minus z k x epsilon y is equal to epsilon y naught minus z k y and gamma x y is equal to gamma x y naught minus z k x y. So, this is our equation number 5, where actually this epsilon x naught is equal to del u naught del x. That means, x component of mid surface strain epsilon y naught is equal to del v naught del y that means, strain along y direction of the mid surface and gamma x y naught is equal to del u naught del y plus del v naught del x. These are mid surface in plane strains. and k x is equal to del square w naught del x square k y del square w naught del y square k x y is equal to twice del square w naught del x del y are the mid surface curvatures. Say this is your equation number 7, mid surface curvatures, this is actually plus, this is plus, plus, plus and this is minus, minus, minus. So, I think we all know the definition of curvature actually for small uh, deflection it is actually del square y del x square. Okay. So, this is the mid surface curvature in the x z plane, mid surface curvature in the y z plane and this is the twist curvature. And because the mid surface curvature happens to be the curvature of the laminated plate itself, therefore, in this expressions for k x k y k x y that not is not uh, that, that the uh, prefix of 0 or not is not uh, provided but here this epsilon x naught means it is the mid surface in plane stresses and this k x k y k x y are the mid surface curvature or simply curvature the same thing. Okay. Therefore, equation 5 could be written as epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y is equal to epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught plus z into k x k y k x y say this is equation number 8. This is mid surface mid surface in plane strains okay. and this is curvature. So, 
the strain at any point could be established in terms of the mid surface strains and curvatures. And of course, it is decided by uh, what is the location of that point with respect to the reference plane. Okay. So, we have established the uh, displacement field, we have also established the in plane strains. We will now move to the constant relation or the stress strain relationship. Now, you will appreciate that, uh, that in a laminate, suppose you have an n layer laminate, we have an n layer laminate. n number of layers. Uh, so, considering any layer k, okay, if suppose this is the mid surface. So, any layer k, kth layer, if the distance of this kth layer is z, then the stress strain relationship for that layer is this is the stress strain relationship the in plane stresses in the x y plane could be related to the corresponding in plane strains in the x y plane for the kth lamina by means of this what is this this is we have studied already we have discussed reduced transformed stiffness matrix for an orthotropic lamina okay it's in the global xy plane okay therefore uh, using equation number uh, say 8 okay uh, using equation number 8 we can write this as this epsilon x epsilon y and gamma x y could be expressed in terms of epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught plus z into k x k y and k x y So, this is our equation number 9. Okay. And uh, now, if you see the uh, this is for kth layer, this is for kth layer, and uh, this stiffness uh, reduced transform stiffness matrix is for kth layer. And if you see the uh, sorry, if you see the stress strain relationship this is for a particular layer okay but the laminate is actually the laminate actually consists of a uh, number of layers say in this case if we have considered an n layer laminate let us see how the suppose if we consider say for example if we consider a four layer laminate So, we have seen that the strain variation this is actually x and this is z. We can do the similar thing for y z plane also. So, the strain variation across the thickness is actually linear. Okay. The strain variation across the thickness is linear. Suppose, this is the strain variation. Okay. Maybe this is the strain variation. You could see the expression for strain, it is actually linear, it varies linearly with z. Okay. And what is the uh, 
stress variation in these four layers because it is a multi layer laminate in each layer the stiffness will be different. Okay. If you look at the stiffness, stiffness of each layer could be different. Maybe this is very high, this may be low, okay. this may be the stiffness variation. Actually, it is not a scalar quantity, it is not one quantity, but just to show that the stiffnesses could be different and in each layer. This leads to the stress variation across the thickness as So, if we now try to find out, suppose this is layer 1, 2, 3, 4. If I want to find out what is the stress at this point, okay, what we have to do is first we find out the strain at this point. How we find out the strain at this point? Mid surface strain plus z coordinate of this point multiplied by the rotation alpha x okay, or uh, for uh, epsilon y it will be alpha y. So, we can find out the strain at this point, multiply that strain with q bar that will give us the stress. Suppose this is the stress here. Similarly, at this point maybe this is the stress here. Okay. Maybe the stresses vary like this. Now, when it comes to this point 2, at this point the stress could be obtained using q bar for 1 or using q bar for 2. Therefore, there will be stress discontinuity. Okay. Okay. Therefore, there could be stress discontinuity at the interface. Okay. Maybe this is how the stresses vary. Okay. This is the stress variation. So, we could, we could appreciate that the while the strain variation is linear along the thickness, the variation in stresses are not so, because the stiffness are different in different layers and therefore, the stress variation is uh, not linear also it is not continuous okay at the interface the stresses are discontinuous okay now i have shown here that the strain variation is linear and i have shown that at a particular point the strain is zero but it is not through the mid surface okay we are conversant with the beam bending where we have a neutral axis at which the strain is zero above which it is positive below which it is negative i mean it changes sign at the neutral axis Okay. But in this case, the mid surface is not the neutral axis. Why? We will appreciate that uh, if you look at the strains, expression for the strain, this is the mid surface strain and this is the curvature. Okay. Suppose you have a laminate where there is no rotation, only mid surface strain, then the strain variation will be like this. This is constant. Okay the same everywhere epsilon naught. Suppose it is only rotation there is no stretching then the stress va strain variation will be like this. This is the strain variation it is like pure bending. Okay. Therefore, the resultant stress strain variation will be something like this depending upon the relative magnitude of epsilon naught and epsilon b it could be it is still linear but it may be something like this that is what we have shown here okay so this is the resultant strain so anyway now this is the stress variation therefore the stress in each layer is different and it is also discontinuous at the interface. Okay. So, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.